Hello, can you hear me? Yes. It's good? Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Nasto, and I'm going to be doing a uh, talk on Rust. Um, I uh, studied uh, hardware engineering in college, and uh, I've been doing uh, Python for uh, five years now, and uh, I wanted to learn a uh, new language, kind of going back to a uh, low level language, and uh, I thought it'd be cool to do a uh, uh, talk on Rust, uh, assuming that you know uh, Python. Um, so what is Rust? Um, Rust is a uh, programming language uh, developed by Mozilla. Um, it's a low-level language and it's uh, relatively new, uh, around 10 years old. Um, this is a uh, simple Hello World application, except uh, we're going to be printing some numbers uh, instead of a, a Hello World. Uh, so there's this is this is in Python, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> this is so yeah, dot format, uh, you know, x and y. Um, okay, so now this is the uh, Rust version. Um, so uh, since it's a low level, you have to explicitly uh, say what type of integer it is. So it's a 32-bit integer, um, and uh, that's just the range of values. And um, you also will notice that the uh, brackets are similar, um, except that instead of dot format, it's uh, comma separated. And uh, the colon uh, basically just tells you what type it is. So x is a um, integer. Um, so what is a low-level language? A uh, low-level language is a uh, programming language that's close to the hardware, and um, it has uh, less abstraction. Um, so this is a uh, diagram. Uh, I would put, um, I kind of uh, have, have it flipped, but um, I would put uh, Rust in between uh, C++ and Java because it doesn't have a garbage collector, um, but it has some higher level features than uh, C++. Um, so uh, why use a low-level language? Um, well, uh, since you're working directly with the um, uh, hardware, um, you can uh, you know have it be faster. Um, you can control your memory usage. Um, also, it's a learning experience because you can kind of learn more about um, you know with less abstraction how the hardware works. Um, also, it's, uh, it's, everything is going to be more explicit. Uh, for example, in Python, you have um, uh, like false uh, evaluates to, like the string false evaluates to true, an empty string evaluates to uh, false, and um, in Rust, basically everything has to be completely explicit. Um, so what are the disadvantages? Um, well, you have to write more code, um, and there's a slower development time because there's more complexity. Um, and uh, another thing is you could just use NumPy um, instead and um, use uh, Python, but uh, have it so it's wrapped over the C code. That makes it um, uh, higher level you're using Python, but you're still writing the C code in NumPy. Um, so and if you look at benchmarks um, between NumPy and C, um, you can see that things are kind of the same. Uh, sometimes you might do something a little bit more complicated that doesn't exactly map onto the NumPy, and then you could have a little bit of a performance boost. Um, but uh, usually things are pretty much the same. But on the other hand, um, this also means that you could use low-level code uh, with Python. Um, like you could, for example, use Rust um, uh, instead of Fortran uh, or to do something like that. Uh, because in uh, SciPy, Fortran is used um, to extend Python. Um, so uh, there are uh, the data types in Python are string, uh, bool, int, and float. These are the lower level data types. Um, in Rust, um, you have string except it's uh, capital S. Uh, bool is the same. Um, the int and the floats you have to specify the um, whether it's signed or unsigned, which means it's if it's positive or negative. Um, also the size, which has to do with how many values. You can like the max maximum value and the minimum value. Um, this is a complete list of mapping from um, the NumPy types to um, the Rust types. Um, yeah, I guess I'm uh, gonna keep going here. Um, so, uh, well, what about uh, constants? So, uh, in Python, there are no constants. Um, 
uh, We're All Adults Here is a uh, quote by uh, Guido Verrosum uh, when asked about uh, constants. Uh, why is there no constants in Python? Um, so there are constants, but you kind of just use capital letters uh, to signify that it's a constant. And uh, the whole point is we're all adults here, and this is uh, safety by convention because we have chosen the convention to use capital letters, and which means that we will keep these values constant. And if we do need to change them, we can. We're not going to uh, enforce it. We're all adults here. Uh, so, and, and Rust uh, is a little bit more of a paranoid approach. Um, you have enforced safety, and it's also by default. Um, so, in Rust, all variables are constants, um, and uh, they cannot be changed unless you specify explicitly that they are not constant. Um, so, there's uh, mutable and immutable. So, uh, mutable means that it can be changed, immutable means that um, it cannot be changed. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, mute keyword. Um, so this is a uh, statement in Rust, uh, let x equals 5. Um, now we're going to uh, let x equals 6. Um, if we try to uh, do x equals 6, um, there's going to be a compiler error because um, the uh, variable x is constant by default. Um, so the way you uh, fix that is uh, the big fun, uh, obviously. And uh, you use <laughs> you use the uh, mute keyword, mute keyword, um, which means that you can modify it. It's mutable. So uh, now you can do x equals six, and uh, everyone is happy. Um, so uh, let's go over uh, lists in Rust. So lists in Rust are called vectors. Um, this is a simple Python example where uh, you have just some uh, integers, and you're appending a number at the end. Um, and then you print the length, and then you iterate through it. Um, so in Rust, it's going to be, uh, you have to use the mutable uh, keyword because you're going to be changing uh, the, the vector. You're going to be adding an element to it. Um, and then instead of the uh, length function, it's a dot length attribute. Instead of append, it's, it's dot push. Um, and then when you iterate through, you have to use uh, brackets. Um, it's it's uh, not the space, not the empty space like Python. Uh, and also there's a fancy uh, ampersand, which uh, I will get to. Um, OK, so then function syntax. Um, in uh, Python, a function is uh, hello. Um, it <laughs> the function is called hello, but uh, it's called uh, a df to do a function. In Rust, it's going to be fn. Um, and you also have to explicitly declare the uh, type with the colons again. Um, so we have a 32-bit integer. Um, and then if you want to do a return value, you also have to explicitly declare the return value. Uh, as in the last example, um, you have to use an arrow to indicate that it's a Boolean in this specific example. So it returns a Boolean. Um, um, so in order to run uh, Rust code, you have to use something called cargo, which is a little bit similar to pip, um, but it's also how you run the code. So in uh, Python, you do python hello.py, um, and then um, in your requirements file, you, um, you would do an equal equal and then put the version number. Um, in Rust, there's no virtual environments, and you have to have a uh, requirements file for every project that you do. And uh, the syntax is similar, except there's only one equal sign. And you have to use quotes. Um, and um, uh, you do cargo run inside the directory instead of um, uh, the name of the file. Um, so uh, let's talk about uh, dictionaries. Um, so a uh, dictionary in Python here is uh, basically just a in this example, it's a person's name and then a um, uh, ID. Um, so we're going to do that in Rust. And uh, in Rust, it's called a hash map. Um, so you have to make it mutable again because you're changing it. It's not uh, fixed. Um, and then you have to use the uh, bracket um, symbol, um, which means that you're going. The key is going to be a string, and then the um, value is going to be an integer. So here you have um, 
and instead of the brackets symbols, you have to use a function name. So you use that insert, and then that would be the first argument, and then the second argument is going to be an integer. And uh, you also have to call the two string um, on uh, a string literal. Uh, you, you can't just uh, put string there if you want to do the string data type. Um, so uh, there's also something else called a struct. Um, and uh, the way you would use this is if you're uh, in Python, you're doing something like um, you have a person, and then instead of uh, a key and a value, you have them both be inside a dictionary. So you have uh, a name and an ID um, inside a dictionary. Um, so now you, uh, we're just going to print that. Um, and that's the Python example. So now in Rust, um, we're actually going to declare a struct. Um, and that's going to have one field called name, and that's going to be a string, and then a field called ID, which is going to be a 32-bit integer. Um, and then to uh, define that, we're going to put a person, which is the name of the struct, and then the curly brackets, and then the Python. This, the syntax is similar to Python. Um, of course, you also have to do the semicolons um, as well for everything. Um, and then um, to do to access the value, you use the dot operator. Um, of course, in uh, Python, you can make a class, um, which will achieve uh, somewhat similar results. Um, so uh, you you will still have to do the init uh, statement, um, but this way you can define functions, and then you can um, uh, use the dot operator um, to access it. Um, there's also something called a data class in Python, um, which um, is basically a, a, a decorator. Um, so the decorator will uh, wrap around your class and will implement some methods for you or do certain things depending on what it is. Um, so uh, in Rust, a uh, decorator is used more often and um, it's used to basically implement methods. Um, it's not used to wrap, wrap around functions, but uh, to implement methods. So in this uh, specific example, um, this uh, 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 derived implementation, a derived debug trait is called, um, will implement for you the print statement for this struct. Um, so now you can do this person is, um, uh, and then print the person name, and this is because it's, um, you have that uh, syntax at the top of the, of the class. Um, so let's talk about uh, classes. Um, so um, in uh, Python, uh, you, uh, you have this uh, class called a person here, name and ID, and then we have this uh, function, uh, ride bike. Um, I guess it's, it's not the most uh, thing, that, something that could be used in production, but uh, it just prints if the person is riding a bike. Um, so in Rust, um, you would have a struct person, and then you would uh, define a method for the struct um, using the uh, implement keyword. Um, and then you put the name of the, uh, uh, of the class there. And then uh, you also notice that the syntax is similar with the self. You would use the ampersand self as well. Um, so uh, Python rules for objects. Um, Objects are uh, passed by reference. Um, uh, so for example, you have a list, and then you assign that um, list to y. So you have x equals the list, and then you assign it to y. So now you have x and y both pointing to the same list. Um, so um, you can have multiple references to the same object. Um, so which one is the owner? Is it, does it exist in X or does it exist in Y? And in Python, it's both. Um, so in Rust, um, you can only have one owner of the list. Um, so you would have the list, and then if you assign it to Y, now um, the variable X cannot be used anymore because it is um, gone. Or it's not gone, but it's it, it, the owner now is Y. Um, so if you try to print X, um, you're gonna uh, the code will not compile. Um, you can still have multiple uh, uh, reference uh, multiple references like in Python, but you have to use the percent 
uh, symbol to uh, explicitly uh, uh, make that. Um, and you can, uh, and then if 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 uh, the owner goes out of scope, and you have a reference to that variable still, then uh, the com it's going to be a compiler error because um, you basically deleted something that um, uh, because that that variable went out of scope and you deleted it, and then um, uh, it's going to uh, uh, print an error basically. Um, so um, this is actually Python code, but I'm just going to pretend that it's Rust code, um, <laughs> just for easier easier uh, writing on the slide, basically. Uh, so you have uh, x equals a list, and then you're going to write it to a file. Um, so what happens is now the variable x um, gets passed to the function, and it, it uh, it's no longer it's no longer owned by x; it's owned by the variable inside the function write to file. So when you try to print it outside um, that function, it's going to go out of scope. Because you're, you, have, you have it at x, and then you pass it to the function. The function goes out of scope, and then the variable is deleted. Um, so the way to do this is, again, you have to pass by reference. Um, so you have to uh, put the ampersand, which passes the value by reference. Um, um, and this is done implicitly in Python, but in Rust, you have to uh, explicitly do that. Um, so uh, 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 comparing the Python compiler versus Rust. Um, so Python, you're going to, uh, uh, at, at compile time, it's going to check for syntax. It's going to check for white space. It's going to uh, check for variable names. Um, and then it's going to generate the Python bytecode. Um, in Rust, you're going to check the syntax, you're going to check the variable names, you're also going to do type checking um, to make sure it's what you said it was. If it's an integer, it has to be an integer. Um, it's also going to check the main ma management, uh, which was just in the uh, previous slide, um, whether you, it goes out of scope or not. And then it's going to generate uh, machine code. Um, so why Rust um, as opposed to another language? Um, it has uh, higher level features um, uh, built into it, uh, like modern languages. Uh, it doesn't have any garbage collection. You um, manage your own memory, and it's also uh, memory uh, safe at compile time. Uh, disadvantages. Um, it's slow compile time because it's doing a lot of things during the compile step, so it's, it's going to be slow. Um, uh, that's the end. Uh, any questions? Do you feel the experience of learning Rust has made you a better programmer? Um, I think it's uh, helped me be, oh, yeah. Uh, the question is, has, uh, has learning Rust made me a better programmer? Um, and the answer is um, uh, yes, in a way, just because I'm more um, aware of where, where the stuff gets passed around um, more now than I was before, where the memory gets passed around. Question right there. Yeah, one of your slides you had a, a string literal and then the, the, the function to string. Mm -hmm. The string literal down to the string. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of that? Um, so uh, in Rust, you have to, if you want to use a string, you have to do, um, I'm just finding the slide here. Um, you have to do dot to string um, because um, there's two string types. One is a character array. Um, and then another one is the string type. Like the unicode, yeah. Yeah, so the, um, if you don't have the two string there, it's going to be similar to a numpy character, right? Okay. Um, so it's a fixed length. Um, any other questions? Over there. Where do you get it? Where do you find it? Rust. Where, where do I find Rust? Where do you find Rust? I make sure. Who makes it? Where do you download it? From? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can uh, you can uh, Google Rust uh, and uh, install basically Cargo, and um, that's uh, you know it's made by Mozilla or it's affiliated with Mozilla, and uh, yeah, I mean you can you can find it. Uh, any other questions? Right there in the back. Um, if you overflow, um, I believe it's actually just going to, 
on wrap around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and that's yeah. Maybe I could be wrong on that. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. Actually, I, I used to use Ada, and Ada would have a, a, a you know you could you could check you could you could make it you could make the hardware trip yeah. if you overflowed, but it was really slow. Yeah. Like doing hardware tripping on an overflow, so everybody would turn it off. Oh yeah, well if you're using like um, IE Triple E floating point, you can have like the bit, like the overflow bit and set. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Cheers. yeah. All right. Uh, one more question. What's your favorite uh, package or dependency? Uh, my favorite package or dependency um, in Rust, um, I would say. Um, I guess uh, really the only uh, the only uh, package or dependency I've used so far is uh, JSON, and uh, it's a, it's interesting, uh, definitely. Uh, uh, all right, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, Kevin.